<laughs> yeah, the Sicilians, when they came to Chicago, I think could have never imagined that somebody would one day create the, I guess, what the Chicago deep dish pizza is. It's just like this hefty, heavy set, big boss of a pizza. And you don't always want that. Sometimes you want something like this, something that you can just easily bomb. What, what, what I'm hearing you say, Gene, is that Chicago style pizza is so bad, even Chicago doesn't like it. Is that right? <laughs> Greatest restaurant city in the whole entire world, and that's why we call it Grand Forks. Welcome back to Grand Forks, the show where we give out-of-town guests three local items to see which one they would come back for. Morning, Gene. Morning, John. Here's that dry cap for you. Thanks so much. I see the episode's doing well. It is. How's it feel to support the hometown? I'm not even from here, John. I'm from Chicago. This is not pizza, pizza. Okay, Gene. Don't worry. We can fix this. I know a place and a guy that'll put hair back on your lip. My name is Matt Wingham, and I am uh, one of two owners of Rhombus Guys. It actually started as a smoothie stand. <laughs> Okay, so how do you go from smoothie stand to what you are now? Long story, how much time do you got? About 15 minutes. Okay, better make it quick. So the smoothie <laughs> stand, it was a mobile unit that we built on an old snowmobile trailer. They didn't know what we were doing. The frame was all uh, kind of slanted. We said that thing's not square at all. It's more like a rhombus. We took it around to fairs and festivals and people started calling us the Rhombus Guys. We started selling hot dogs out of a crock pot in the smoothie stand. Mm. We ate a lot of hot dogs. We didn't sell very many. We knew that hot dogs and smoothies were not going to be our future. Sure. So we started kicking around the idea and that's where we came up with trying to start selling pizzas. The pizza that I selected for us to try is actually the first unique combination that I came up with. And it's the Winstein. My last name, Wingem, combined with Einstein. Yes. Winstein. It's pepperoni, green olives, and jalapenos. Uh -huh. Just the perfect amount of ingredients. It's a brilliant pizza, and it has a brilliant name. <laughs> yeah, should we dive in, everyone? Yeah, get Absolutely, after it. Yeah. All right, so Gene, I'll... I'll... Serve me? I might as well. I, I feel you both. Yeah. I'll just serve myself here, so you're <laughs> gonna take that long. I mean, that's great. It's exactly what I want. Mm. You can talk to pizza in your mouth here. I can. I'm really nervous yeah. about doing that here. There's nobody else around. Except for all of them. <laughs> Hello, them. I would call this the best possible version of a pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni naturally has spice to it. The tomato sauce naturally has some acid. And by putting the jalapenos on there to kind of accentuate the spice, and by putting the, the olives on there to kind of accentuate the acid, you're getting basically a pizza that tastes like more of a pepperoni pizza. This is the pepperoni 2.0. I typically don't like olives, uh, but they, something about the jalapeno and the pepperoni with the olives, it's its like harmonious. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like a, it's like a well-tuned guitar. Just yeah. music to my palate. Ah, yeah. it's good to hear that the Chicagoan <laughs> likes it. I love the flavor of your crust. Your crust is phenomenally good. If I got like a basket of just like torn crust with nothing on it, I'd be happy. What are some of the flavors you've incorporated into that crust? It's very good. There is olive oil in mm -hmm. there, but it's really about the proofing of sure. the dough. One of the things I noticed about Rhombus Guys that I really like is that a lot of pizza chains are all kind of doing the same thing. You got your pepperoni, your sausage, your meat lovers, your vegetarian. If they have a unique pizza, it's some version of like, let's just put everything onto one piece. Well, the garbage plate or the taco pizza or whatever. <laughs> ah. You guys have crafted very unique flavors and that seems to be your main product. What was the thought process? Why did you choose to go that direction? When we were doing smoothies, all of those were our own concoctions that we came up with. And we said, you know, we don't really want to go down this route of just doing these plain, boring, basic, cheap pizzas. We would rather do something unique, creative, 
and we think that that will bring us more joy and we will have more fun doing it. Well, Matt, I'm really excited to have the pizza. Really excited to see what the guest picks. Wish you the best of luck. I think your Amalfi Coast is better than the Windstein because I picked that, but we'll see what happens. That's another one of my creations. <laughs> I so. know, either way you win. I can't, <laughs> I can't uh, either way you win, Matt. That's bold. Big time. Honestly. The cheese, what kind of what kind of cheese is that on there? There is goat cheese on there and fresh corn mozzarella. The goat cheese is incredibly prominent. Mm -hmm. I think the the prosciutto is really nice too. Yeah. And it's honestly like for, for, for all the stuff that it has on there, it's got a pretty decent crisp as well. Mm-hmm. The best way I could like describe this pizza in yeah. a nutshell is like if you were to have a really, really high quality salad mm, and then yeah. just like put it on top of a pizza yeah. and there you go. And it's just convenience factor for me, I think is the, the big thing. Mm -hmm. the, the ingredients are mm -hmm. really fresh, high quality, mm -hmm. but the ease of which you eat a pizza, I mean, you just, mm -hmm. you don't gotta do like the, putting each individual ingredient on a fork and then putting it in your mouth. It's all right there for you. And I will say the thing about this pizza and you hinted at this with the salad bit, I have actually killed an entire one of these by myself, just just gone to town. And at the end of it, like I felt full, but not stopped, if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. I could see this being a very light, almost like appetizer pizza, if you will. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's, it's like, you know, you're getting warmed up to the, mm -hmm. to the fresh ingredients and the light, like delicate combinations that are going on here. That's a good pizza. Yeah. Solid pizza. My name is Jaden Pesh. I'm the manager here at Rama Skies Pizza. I'm kind of a little bit everywhere within my position where I manage, I serve, and I'm in the kitchen. What is it about this place that makes it a good place to work? I think it's so unique. It's not like every other chain restaurant that you go to town. Like, there's so much flexibility here. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm able to like plant flowers here and to, like do like little updates so that like I have that ability to do or I couldn't go and do that over McDonald's for example. <laughs> no. It's like the only chain I could think of really quick. <laughs> At McDonald's you'd just be fixing the ice cream machine all the time. And we also plant mint and basil each year so we have fresh mint and basil for a drink. I don't see that often anywhere else. What's unique about the pizza? What, what makes the Brahma's Guys pizza unique? I think the fresh ingredients. I think about that all the time where like we're a hand slicing the tomatoes, the peppers, we're hand grating the cheese. Everything is nearly by hand here and I think that's really impressive. Like our sauces, for example, are all handmade. Like nothing just comes in a jug and we pour it out. There's no rhombus juice no. pizza sauce. <laughs> so it's a secret recipe? Yes. Gotcha, okay, okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about the pizza you've selected to give our guest today. What's it called? The Girlfriend Diavolo. Okay. It's a marinara base, Frank's Red Hot drizzled over it, mozzarella cheese, chicken, jalapenos, pineapple, and a little sprinkle of cheddar. Always gonna be win. Here we are. So I don't know if you guys are ready for this. Oh boy. We got the one and only girlfriend Diavolo. We got marinara sauce, well spicy marinara, pineapple, chicken, jalapenos, mozzarella, cheddar, wham bam. There it is, sweet and spicy. Just as she is. What are we drinking today, Jaden? We have our iconic blonde ale. It is a light lager. Which came first, the movie or the beer? I think we know the answer to that question. <laughs> yes, I know they named the movie after a Grand Forks beer. So cheers to being on the front of Hollywood culture and brewing culture. That's banging. Wow, that's mm. honestly like 
so balanced. I mean, mm -hmm. with the jalapeno, because it's, it's not pickled jalapeno, right? it's like fresh no. jalapeno. We only oh, do use the fresh ones because they're so much better. Yeah, that's yeah. so disappointing when I go somewhere and they use pickled jalapeno. It's honestly For like, like nachos. Exactly, it's a turn off. Like, they're killing mm -hmm. me, All they're time. killing me. Because mm -hmm. I don't know about your spice tolerance with foods. Pretty high, but it's pretty like high. Pickled jalapeno, it's, it's just missing the mark. It is. But what I like about the fresh jalapeno, and I think you were getting at this, is that it brings spice, but it also has a kind of vegetal freshness that the pickled jalapeno takes away that freshness and replaces it with this more acid. Absolutely. The sweetness from the pineapple, like I typically will never order a pizza with pineapple on it. Uh -huh. However, I think I may have had my mind changed with this one. Like this is, mm. this is great. Why is this your favorite pizza, Dredd? I love the spiciness of the jalapenos, like we've already kind of mentioned here. Just honestly, the simplicity of it. It's truly, I think, what makes it so great. And yeah, now Jean likes pineapple on pizza, so what do you think about pineapple on pizza? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, the people who, as an insecure teenager and 20-something-year-old, early 20s, the people who I most wanted to be like didn't like pineapple on pizza, but I never really had my own thoughts about it. Like, you ever just kind of defer to like a supposed authority figure where you're like, oh. like some phonies. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Thank you, Cole. Who's the kid from Catcher in the Rye? Holden. Holden, thank you. <laughs> oh. Holden, who doesn't like his phonies, thank you, Holden. Um, yeah, I was I was kind of phony about it, because like, I, I loved, I learned how to cook watching originally Gordon Ramsay videos, and he's like, I didn't put pineapple on pizza, what are you doing? It's terrible <laughs> Gordon Ramsay video. <laughs> so Gene, could you explain to us Chicago-style pizza? The outsider impression is that you are always eating Chicago-style pizza in Chicago. Like, what's the real story? All right, so a real Chicagoan will always tell you, you're not from Chicago if you eat Chicago-style hot dogs, and you're not from Chicago if you eat Chicago-style deep dish. My true Chicagoans are eating Polish hot dogs mm -hmm. or Polish sausage with grilled onions and mustard on it, and they're eating tavern-style pizza. Which pizza are you coming back for? Okay, so the coast, I mean, that was a great pizza, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. However, for my liking, it's a little, you know, it's, it's decadent. The flavors are really delicate. They pair well together. It's very thought out and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's sophisticated. It's like an aristocrat pizza. <laughs> and then the girlfriend Diavolo. I mean, that one is spicy, sweet. You have that like irresistible combination. But honestly, I think this one wins. Like when I'm eating pizza, I just, I really want a bunch of things on it and I want to bomb it. I want to pound it. This is, this is like, you know, this satisfies. I, I will still be sticking with my Amalfi Coast. And I think, I think actually maybe the real winner here today is, is, is the Wingem family. All of these creations come out of your house, right, Matt? That's correct. The Amalfi Coast is where Kate and I got engaged. Kate actually designed the girlfriend. This is, like I said, the first one I did. So you're right. It's a Wingem trifecta here today. So if I, if I can just notice something, we go from like hot and spicy and sweet and really exciting to bougie. Is that what marriage does to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> no, she was always all of those things. <laughs> Good answer, Matt. If you like this episode, then click the like button. If you want to see another one, please click the subscribe button. And if you would like to help us make more, please click the first link in the description to support us on Patreon.